Welcome to our smart board training. This is Notebook 1.1 for the 4000 series boards. So we're going to talk about how to plug in, turn on your board. We're also going to talk about how to use the right click as well as the on-screen keyboard. And we're going to talk about how to use Smart Ink to write over different programs. So when we're done, you should be able to do all of these things. Plugging in your smart board, turning it on, uh, smart board and pen tray basics, orienting the board or not orienting the board. Uh, on-screen keyboard, right click, and then using Smart Ink. So you'll be able to do all of those things at the end of this. So here's your smart board. Uh, it's a flat panel TV, so you think of it, it looks very much like a TV, there's no projector, uh, and you're gonna plug in your computer to that. And so with that, you're gonna have two main, um, two main cables that plug into your smart board here. So the first one is the USB, okay? That USB is going to go to your computer and that's going to control the touch. And so if you're having problems with the touch not working correctly, then it's the USB that you're going to look at. So make sure it's plugged in all the way. Uh, the plug for the, the USB is underneath. And so sometimes it has a tendency to fall out a little bit or it can. Uh, and so you may want to check that, make sure it's pushed in all the way if for some reason you're having problems with the touch. The next is the VGA. That could also be an HDMI uh, that you're going to go for uh, what you see. So that's going to handle what you're seeing on the display. Uh, and so those two cables you're going to be plugging in. You'll also have audio. Uh, the audio will run through the USB, so that will also affect uh, there the audio. So those are some things you should be aware of as far as how to plug in your smart board. Some people will have like a desktop that's just always plugged in, it won't be a big deal. Uh, some people will have a laptop that they'll set down, and so you'll have those two cables that you'll plug in. As far as how to turn it on. Okay, uh, there's two different ways you can turn on. There is a remote that comes with it, so you can use the remote to power on the display. You also have these input buttons that are on the side. So on the right side here towards the bottom, and so I can use that to turn it on. The bottom, the bottom most one is the power, so that'll be the one that you'll use to, uh, to turn that on. Another way that you can turn that on, um, some of the displays have it, uh, what they call an input connect, meaning that when you turn on the input or plug in an input, it will turn on the display. This could be useful in some situations where uh, you plug in your laptop, it'll automatically turn on the display to get ready to use. Or if you've got a desktop and it goes to sleep, when you wake that desktop up or turn it on, it will notice that and, and turn on the display. Not all of the displays have that turned on by default, but that, uh, that could be an option on your display. So, but a lot of them you'll want to turn on with the power because you don't necessarily want that kicking on in the middle of class. So from the very basics, Think of this like a giant touchscreen for your computer, because again, whatever, whatever shows up on your computer, so once you've got it all plugged in, whatever is on your computer should be what's showing up on the display. And so those should be mirroring each other. And so really, everywhere I touch, it's as if I'm clicking with my mouse. And so if I were to get out of full screen here, go to my desktop, so if I come down here and click start, I can see that. If I click on uh, Google Chrome, it's gonna pull up Google Chrome. So everywhere I'm going, it's as if I'm touching with, uh, it's as if I'm clicking with my mouse, but all I'm doing is touching with my finger. So that makes a, a very easy interaction and something that's very uh, familiar and easy to work with. Okay, uh, let's get back into full screen mode here. The pen tray. So there is a little tray on here uh, with the pens in it. Uh, the interesting thing about this pen tray is it really, it's nothing, there's nothing active about it. And so, uh, I could actually, there's two screws on the bottom, you could take the pen tray off completely if you want to. Uh, the pens are just plastic, so I could use my finger to do everything um, as far as writing. So if I come in here and select a color, I could be writing with my finger all the time. So you could never use the pens, you could use the pens for everything. I mean, it's completely up to you whether or not you want to use them, whether or not you want to have that there. There's nothing special about the pen tray. If you've used uh, previous smart boards, uh, a lot of times you'd pick up the pen and it would know that you picked up a pen in this one. It's not really going to necessarily know that. Uh, the board comes pre-oriented, which is nice. So if uh, some of you are familiar with older smart boards, you'd have to orient that board. You have to go through and touch several points so it knows where you're touching. This one is pre-oriented, so you don't need to do that. Uh, even if you change resolutions, it'll, it'll adapt to the resolution changes. If for some reason you're having problems where it's not writing where you're writing, uh, the first thing I would check is make sure that the whole screen is visible. Uh, every once in a while you'll plug in a display or plug in a computer and for some reason it's not displaying everything. A lot of times if you unplug that VGA or HDMI, plug it back in, let it reset, 
uh, it'll display everything and then you're back to writing where it's supposed to be because everything's where it should be. If for some reason you do need to orient the board, uh, the way you're going to do that is you're going to go to the uh, system tools. Okay, on a Mac, you're going to find that on the very top toolbar, kind of by the time. On a PC, it's going to be the bottom towards the time. I'm going to click this arrow to see more. You'll see there it is. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to get a bunch of options. And one of those options is to orient. Uh, that's going to tell you uh, it was already oriented. So if your experience is alignment issues, there's some information that you can go to. Oh, it looks like it's not going to let me orient. Okay, I guess you can't orient that way. So, um, but you shouldn't need to orient the board. It's already done, so that's not, shouldn't be a problem. On-screen keyboard. So if I go to the same place, if I go to that smart board tools, click on that, on the third down it says keyboard. And for some reason mine's not working. Um, Windows also down by the time has an on-screen keyboard that you can use. So there is an on-screen keyboard that is available to be used. Uh, Mac, you can click on the smart board tools, go to keyboard and it's going to pull up a keyboard uh, that you can utilize. And so it's just like typing. Okay, So you can type on that and wherever you've selected will start putting up the letters as if you were typing on a keyboard. Next, I can right click. So the way to right click on this board is to just click and hold for three seconds. And then you're going to get that drop down menu the same as if I'd right click something. So it makes it really easy. I think I can also touch with one finger and tap with an adjacent finger. Yes, that works as well. Uh, that may not work everywhere, but it does work in here. All right, now let's get into Smart Ink. So that's kind of the basics of using your Smart Board. So you can run your computer from your smart board. You can use the keyboard, you can right click. Uh, everywhere you touch is like a left click. So I can completely do everything up here that I could be doing uh, from my computer. Obviously there's gonna be some things that are easy to do sitting at the computer, then up at the smart board, like typing for example. I don't think you wanna be in there 10 finger typing. It's not gonna work very well. But you, you can interact with your computer completely as if you were uh, sitting at it. Uh, up at the smart board, which is going to be great for during class or using this. The next thing you'll be able to do is with the smart ink, you'll be able to write over other programs. So I can go back to the internet here. Here I am on Google, and so I can pick up a pen. This smart ink, so this little floating um, circle with the arrow in it, that is smart ink. Okay, and so I can move that anywhere I'd like to. And what I do is I touch on that, and it's going to give me some options. And the pen option is probably the most popular. Click on the pen option, I've got my three, four basic colors, and I can go through and I can annotate over that internet, which is really convenient and really nice. I can click on the color palette here, and I've got access to you know, 16 million colors, so if I want a pink, I can come in and, and then write over that. So the nice part about that is I can pull up websites in class that may be useful to my curriculum, and I'm able to grab that pen, and, or I've also got a highlighter, so I click on the highlighter option, and I can come in and I can highlight over different things as well. So it gives me a way to not just show content and touch it, but also to annotate over that content and really focus attention for the students in on that content. Um, I have the option here to change the color. I also have the option to change the, uh, the thickness of the lines or even the line style on, whoops, not on the highlighters though. Oh, I guess that's not it as well. So I can change the color, I can change the thickness of the line if I need to, uh, and be able to interact with the content that way. I also have the option, so if I click in here as well, I've got an eraser, so if I click on the eraser, then I can go ahead and erase. One thing that I like to do when it comes to erasing is you'll notice this button right here, kind of towards the top right, it's a, it's a smaller circle with a pen in it. If I click on that, I get three options. The first one says to clear ink, the next one says to capture ink, and then the third one says to turn off smart ink. Uh, so I'll use the clear ink frequently rather than going through and trying to erase everything. I'll just click on the clear ink there and that will clear everything all at once. Uh, and you notice as soon as the ink is gone, that little circle goes away. The second one to capture, that one's kind of nice. So let me go back to my pen. So I'm going to circle Google here, click on that and hit capture ink. And what that does is that basically takes a picture of the whole window and my ink and gives me an option to capture that and send it to the clipboard. So I can go paste it somewhere or I can do something else such as send it to a new page in Smart Notebook. So if I send it to a new page in Smart Notebook, then when I come back to my Smart Notebook, it inserts it as an, as an image, which is kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and clear my ink again. 
The other one that I have here, so I've got the pen, the eraser, and the, uh, the arrow. Always go back to the arrow when you want to be clicking on things, so back to being a mouse rather than a pen. And then I've got the toolbox. In the toolbox, I've got several options, like so screen shade, highlight, spotlight, um, screen capture tool. So again, that's where I want to take a picture of something. Uh, the one I like the best is the A, so that one's going to convert to text. So I can come in here, it gives me a little place to write. So I can write, let's say, the chariot group. Okay, and I purposely wrote that really badly. Wow, and it figured it all out. Well, pretty well. So notice it says the chariot group. Okay, so if I do a little caret, it's going to let me insert. So I can do a U, and it's going to insert that U. Now I did a capital U, but when it comes to typing, that's not going to be a big deal. Um, I could also do a vertical line, or if I could do um, a strike through to delete, I can do a circle. And that will allow me to replace. So I can rewrite that. Uh, or I can, so I've got the vertical line to do a separate. Let me show you that really quick. Anyway, so if I do a vertical line, it will add a space. And then if I do a horizontal line, it will um, strike through, it'll delete. So I've got those four pen gestures. Those are all notated here at the bottom, so you can see a, a quick image of those. Once I'm happy with that, I can also click on the keyboard here and see if it gives me the keyboard. Uh, could not open the on-screen keyboard. So again, let me come back in here. So I write the chariot group, converts that to text. I hit the check mark. It says, great, where do you want it? So I click where I want it to go, and it will type it as if I typed it there. So then I can you know, browse for different things, bring up different websites, um, kind of show different things. So that's ways that you can interact with other programs. So that's going to work in other programs. Uh, when you get into Microsoft, it's going to be a little bit different where like in Word, PowerPoint, some of those, it's going to use Microsoft Inc. by default rather than the Smart Inc. But you can, you can go back and forth on some of those. But that's kind of the basics. You'll be able to use the Smart Inc. to annotate over websites, other programs, to really focus attention on the students in on those. And again, we've got the options to capture. Uh, with the capture tool, we've got different types of capture. We can capture an area, a window, the whole screen if we want to, or a freehand area. Uh, we've got our flashlight here, which will just allow us to spotlight on different parts of content. Uh, We've got our zoom tool, so if we need to zoom in on something, as well as a screen shade, if we want to screen shade the content. So that's what those other buttons are going to be for in the toolbox. Again, always go back to the arrow, that's going to help you navigate around and not be writing all the time. Okay, so now it's time for you to practice a little bit. What I want you to do is get on your computer, maybe you get with a friend. I want you to find the connections for the smart board. So find the USB and the VGA or HDMI, whatever that video cable is going to be. Plug those into your smart board. You don't need to orient the smart board, so we can skip on that one. But you do need to, I want you to open up your internet browser, use the on-screen keyboard as a, to browse to a website. Um, also practice right-clicking. Uh, use the smart ink to annotate over that. So practice annotating over that, um, the content that you pull up. And again, you do need to be connected to your smart board for the smart ink to show up. And that'll just be this little arrow that should just pop up and be there all the time, and you can move that around as you need to. So this has been uh, Smart Notebook 1.1 on a 4000 series board. Uh, that includes the 4055, the 4065, the 4070 or E70, as well as the 4075 and the 4084. So a whole line of products. They're all like this. Basically, the one thing I forgot to cover, um, no, I think we're good. So, um, well, the one thing we forgot to cover is the way it works is there's infrared, so inside this, all the way around, um, on the inside bezel, all the way around, it's an infrared strip. And so you need to make sure that there's nothing blocking that. So if you get a lot of dust or debris in there, that can cause uh, a, an issue. So make sure you've got that all set up. Uh, you can clean that once in a while with a soft cloth if you need to. So that's how it works. That's how we do all those things. Uh, go ahead and check us out for the 1.2 also be specific to this board. Uh, and then the rest of them will be the same regardless of whatever board you have. Thanks for watching.